What up guys? So welcome in Brands Head for the second round of the European NASCAR Championship. So I'm Liam Hazemans. I'm Jelensa. We are just done with the free practice. We had already some cool games with uh, Jimmy and Alberto. Um, so definitely yeah, it was a big, big fun, big fun time. So yeah, keep posted because those little videos are going to come on our channel. And of course, well, today we had free practice, just like Gil said. So if you want to have some little content, let's just go back in time to give you an idea of what happened. So we've made it to Brands Hatch. Right. And immediately to turn one. It's turn one where the roller coaster uh, starts. We had a good, good trip uh, to come to England. Uh, a long break to take the train. The Euro, tan Euro tunnel, tunnel. Um, it's actually super cool. Uh, second time that we, we took it. And now, turn one. Uh, isn't that beautiful? I can't wait, can't wait to to put our cars on the track and just go into turn one. Um, so you're telling Loris a little bit about how the stability of the car is important in the first turn. Yeah, right. So actually you want an unstable car, uh, an unstable NASCAR. I don't know if it's uh, the same with the GT3 cars, but we don't want a stable car in turn one because we want that the back is moving a little bit to help us rotating because just like flying into turn one with uh, a blind corner entry, it's always super hard. So um, yeah, we don't want too much grip going into turn one. Okay, interesting. Because normally you fight to keep the grip and to, well, keep the car under control. Yeah, exactly. But uh, like with the high speed that we have here to turn into turn one, if you have like full grip and the bag is too grippy, uh, it's just super tough to make it uh, into turn one. So when the bag is sliding a little bit, uh, helps us to rotate. And then here's a big curb trying to hit it. Two tires full on the curb. And then, um, yeah. And then you are like for four seconds, two seconds, we are, you are just passenger in the car and then you hit the ground, land it and then you, uh, you go uphill. And then you're off into the Druid's hairpin way up yeah, there. That's, that's cool and that's actually also cool because you can break a little later than, than, than you normally want to break because it's, up, it's uphill so um, that's special. It's actually not the biggest track that we drive but it's like uh, you have so many keys to, to just make it here round and be fast and can't can't wait to to drive now with with Hendrix and yeah see see the tips that uh, the guys can give me to to be the fastest here taking turn one is taking big risk if you want to go for the qualifying lap you go like all in and then full on the curb and yeah you never know where you where you land actually like turn one touching the the big curb into turn one you are like like I just said for two seconds for sure you are just passenger just going in and the feeling when you land it, it's so nice. I hope that that a lot of people had already that experience, like when you're driving on a normal road, just like sometimes you have like a little hill and you have like this little hole in the in the body and that you have it like every lap and it's just like whoa. And then hitting the ground, it smells when the chassis, or I don't know what exactly touched the ground and then just up the hill. Now we go to the bone breaker. No, now we go to the osteo. That um, the guy actually is from another team, but um, yeah, he will uh, put my my back and, and everything back in in place. <laughs> and, yeah, yesterday we had a little track work. Today, um, just saying hello to the team, and now we go to the to the bone breaker and hope that he makes me um, gives me back uh, the good the good feeling and uh, put everything back in place to to be ready for today. So your alignment is as straight as your car? Oh, right now, yeah. I feel like an oval car right now. And then we go to the briefing, actually. Yeah, that's, that's right now. Maybe we have to go to the briefing and then to the bone breaker. Like, yeah, so good. That's where it all came from. Oh, you've also 
raced old Mustangs before. Yes, 9065 Mustang. That was the, this one, the one that we just saw. That was a fastback, so I drove I drove a regular one. But it's so fun. You have also like in, in Euro NASCAR, you have the four gears clutch, um, but it's way heavier to steer the old Mustangs than our uh, NASCARs. But uh, that's so much fun. That's actually that was my that was my school was uh, racing in the 60, uh, 1965 five Mustang. So what's the difference between a regular Mustang and a fastback? Uh, yeah, the fastback just has another another bag. They have a little bit more horsepower, and um, like in the rules of the championships, normally you can do a little bit more adjustment on the fastbacks than on the regular one. Okay. No media access. How did you start? I start with karting. Same as you. Yeah. I drove uh, in all Europe. In that case, it was very special. See the difference from Spain to England? That's also a school class, but they are like all dressed similar. That's all, all year the same. They come to, to a lot of races in the UK. to the other side and drive all together go karts They have a little go kart yeah. right outside. So we can go all together. Yeah, do you reckon you're you winning the go kart race? Wonderful <laughs> <laughs> race. Thank you. You're welcome. Now I'm running in class as well. I'm very happy about it. I'm very proud to race in class car. I hope you will enjoy it. It's not usual that Liam is too late. Normally he's always at time. Not that you think that he's, uh, that he's always too late. Always on time, always, always has both his shoes. Yeah, very well organized. So now after briefing it's phone breaking time. Leave out, huh? Out. Oh. Out. Out.
okay? And I hit my hand like this and and I said, was it that hard to break yeah, my to skull? Break the skull? No, they told me that the bone that there is, that is that uh, under the under eye the, yeah. is, is like um, it's really like you know one. it's like the, the how do you say the egg you know ah, yes the, the, the hard yeah. part of the egg yeah. it's yeah. that thin because it has to break in order not to break the eye oh yeah okay so when, when you get a hit to the eye yeah. you very likely break that bone damn yeah you know it's the bone that holds the eye yeah yeah okay but and so the layer it's like super it's soft super soft yeah damn, crazy super thin so you just need to confirm their theory. Yeah, exactly. I wanted what to prove it. Yeah, yeah, so we just Guys, confirmed. it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and Gianmarco, how did you go? In the... Ah, good. Good. I think... Uh, I think better. Better? Yeah. But... Uh, I don't... I uh, don't work uh, well for arrive uh, to 8.6... Uh, yeah. Like Vittorio. 8.6 was fast. Yeah. Don't know how he did, but... <laughs> Impossible. Yeah, you would see it, like, I was just like... <laughs> yeah, I saw it down and you just... And you like, didn't really saw it. <laughs> you couldn't not see it. I was looking ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No rear view. Yeah, I felt it. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Oh, what was that? Oops. I felt all your hopes. Being crushed. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the egg. <laughs> Just like the egg, yeah. Good. Welcome along to Brands Hatch. It's time. There's Liam Hazemans, currently second fastest, 48.531, just over a tenth back from our provisional pole sitter, Gianmarco Ercoli. Now let's see if Hazemans can improve this time by. Ercoli's time has not improved on the previous tour. Let's see if Hazemans can get closer to the benchmark. He does indeed a 48.459 for Liam Hazemans. Second fastest and just about half a tenth off of Gianmarco Ercoli. Yeah, so what's up guys? So we just had qualifying, so went actually pretty well. Second, just by a few hundreds of a second. But uh, yeah, so for me it's done. Now we're going to go to Gil for his qualifying and then we see how it goes. time for what will probably end up being largely the session responsible for our first few rows of the grid. The top 12 in the Euronascar 2 championship about to head out onto the circuit. But you've got some serious competition. Alberto Nasca, who was the pace setter here on Friday uh, in free practice. He will be chief among the competition. The likes of Paul Dufro and Gil Linster, who are currently third and fourth in the standings. Martin Dubeck, who of course was just in the Euronascar Pro shoot out. Certainly one of the primary challenges to Nasca this year. Nasca is last year's runner-up, is the uh, highest ranking driver from 2022's Euronascar 2 grid, of course. Since the Ostiotsis has just crossed the line of 48.807. The Ortsis, oh, staking his claim on the pole position. He's got yellow flags out of Clark Curve. Is that a damaged-looking number 50? Is that 
move it to you with. Yes, it is. Oh, my goodness. The bonnet is up. I thought it was the bonnet up. I didn't want to say because I thought I might be wrong, but yes, the, the, the cooling has significantly improved on the number 50 car. The visibility has been significantly hindered. He did a remarkable job on that lap, I must say. There must be a little bit of visibility to be had under the bonnet. Yeah, so well, we just had qualifying, so for me and Gil went actually pretty well. We started second and M6, but just as you can see, well, look what happened at Gil. So what happened is uh, he came into the last corner, almost made actually, was improving his time for uh, maybe fighting for the pole even. But then yeah, someone bro someone break like in the middle of the corner, so he couldn't avoid and yeah, that's why he hit with the front, uh, front little bumper. So now we just have to change it for the race, but it's all gonna be fine. Thoughts before the race? Yeah, well, well, we just do our thing, huh? We just do the same as every time, just enjoy the most, and then we see where we end up on. But of course, we just try to do the best out of it. Hopefully, you see us in victory lane. That would be the awesome, perfect thing. <laughs> And let's go racing for the first time this year. The lights will go out momentarily and we are racing for the first time. It's Gianmarco Ercoli on the inside of the front row. He should surely lead into the first corner, but Liam Hazemans tries to go around the outside of him. Vittorio Gorelli and Anthony Kumpen still side by side. We've got someone slowing up some laps of this race. It is getting to that time where the moves need to be made and Liam Hazemans I think is very very conscious of that fact it's the final lap of the race and it is the 72 car in second place but can Liam Hazemans reclaim the second place in which he started this is his best opportunity Druids Ben he can't do it there he went to the inside then to the outside here comes our race winner though Gianmarco Ercoli heads the line he takes the first win of the 10th running of the American Speed Fest within the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Vittorio Gorelli just holds on to second place ahead of Liam Hazemans, Kumpen, and Blake Amolan. We'll round out our top five. Sing, go, on. go for it. Okay, yeah, so Liam back here. So yeah, we just got, so my first race of your NASCAR Pro. Went actually pretty well, just made a little mistake, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, that's why actually I was second for like the three or four first laps, and then made a mistake in the last corner and then yeah, uh, the 72 car passed me, so I was third for the whole race. And then, uh, yeah, I tried to pass him, but he drove just an amazing race. So now we try for next race, we're gonna watch for Gil, just see how he does. And then, uh, yeah, tomorrow starting P3. So we try to do better than today. Drivers, start your engines! A bit of a shaky circumstance. We are rolling and it is Alberto Nasca on the inside of the front row as we get this race started. But I think you may have got a tag from behind there from Vladimir Osiortis. He got very snaky and shaky into the first corner. He's still by side by side with Martin Dubek as they run towards Paddock Hill Bend. Vladimir Osiortis is there in third place. Paul Dufro is still in fourth position despite Gil Linster trying to get up into fifth place. Linster, or get up into fourth place, I should say. Linster started sixth. He's managed to find his way around Patrick Schorber. Side by side, Gil Linster to the inside of Paul Dufro, and through goes Linster. That might feel like a, a bit of a just dessert for Gil Linster after he... Uh, Lost quite a bit of qualifying time in that uh, skirmish with uh, Paul Dufro. And is it all line astern? Well, no, not in the slightest. Gil Linster gets himself up into third place there. So Martin Dubeck, having tried to challenge for second place, ends up down in fourth. There's some panel bashing further back as well. I think that was one of, uh, at the end of these long straights into these braking zones. 
And that's uncomfortable. Once you get to that position, it can be hard to get yourself back out of it as Dubek dives up the inside of Gil Linster. And well, perhaps as anticipated, once Nasker and Linster started to fight each other, it's opened the doors to Martin Dubek. We were three wide there as we cut away. And Dubek just holding on to the inside does take third position. Thought Linster was going to stick around the outside there, but he couldn't quite do it. And now, of course, this is giving Alberto Nasker an opportunity to get a few cars earlier on. I just uh, didn't spot that there was a third car involved. And, ah, OK, so we had separate incidents going on. Claudio Romeggio Capelli and Mikael Blakemolen also having an incident together. It will be a two-lap overtime, two laps of racing, double-file restart, and that's happening right now because the Tesla has its lights off. We are going to go racing in just a few moments' time. Of course, lest we forget that the 65 and 48 cars both have five-second penalties applied to them, so this is less than ideal for Davidson and Romagnoli. But there's opportunity for everyone else, and, well, that's bizarre. The 94 and the 14 colliding. Ariana Casoli and Strickler in the 94, they've had a coming together, but I believe we're still going to go green this time. It's a two-by-two two rolling start, two laps of racing. It's Siortzis on the inside, Nasca on the outside, Dubek and Gil Linster on the second row as we get started. And Siortzis hugs the inside line as they approach Paddock Hill Bend. He gets into the lead. Nasca follows suit in second place. A little bit of argy-bargy further back, and oh, Patrick Schauber! Patrick Schober may have missed a gear or something there. His car stopped accelerating, and Jack Davidson had nowhere to go in that one. The two cars collide, the two cars off the circuit, and unsurprisingly, we once again go full course yellow. We've just got confirmation, unfortunately, that we have to end this race under full course yellow there is more racing to come here for the live audience at american speed fest this evening and so this incident between patrick schauber and jack davidson unfortunately marks the end of the race that was a race with a lot of battles i had a very good start starting on p6 on the outside line was a good line and uh, was able to catch up uh, immediately with the top three guys uh, was for a long time on P3 and then uh, lost it in a battle against my teammates and again it's a fourth place and it's a horrible I hate a fourth place but uh, yeah we take it it's a, it's a good position now for the start tomorrow and all in all was a good race I didn't uh, do, did a lot of mistakes had the speed to go with, uh, with the front guys and that was actually for me very important to uh, be here after Valencia and know that I can run in the front uh, yeah so tomorrow another day and hopefully uh, another and a little better result tomorrow you start from what position uh, four fifth hopefully fifth because that will be another outside line All right. This series, but this is pure, as you know, Gil. This is pure English spirit, That's, right? Yeah, the, the UK fans. Uh, I, I, I actually personally, I like them. Yeah, it's me too. So, I think they are the, like the best. Yeah, they are the best. The, it's, the, the Italian fans are also crazy. Yeah, but people in the UK, it's it's another level. Exactly. It's also because of the history they have with motorsport and everything. Yeah. So that's why. Huh? I mean, if you look, if you just turn around. Here. I mean just it's crazy like for example last year we had almost 50,000 people around the track we hit a, a new record this year 60,000 so it's sold really? out yeah we hit a new record so that's actually like we have 
that's now the, 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 the biggest event uh, also for Brands Hatch. Yeah. So it's good that we're part of the new uh, Yeah, for sure. But it's also good, I think, still, Corona is, is still coming back. So Not Corona is coming back, sorry. <laughs> but I think it's still a little part of the story that the fans are coming back, enjoying it again, and yep. just, just being back after that long period of racing. Break. Exactly. That's definitely what that all happened. I mean, with Corona, we had almost, what was it? It was, well, it was closed, huh? I mean, yeah, we were closed. driving, but yeah, yeah, there was with no, no fans, no spectators, yeah. and now the people are again enjoying yeah. to come back, watch the series, everything. And I mean, if you just have a look, like everything, like the cars that are here, the show that is behind. Here we have our competitors. <laughs> that's a 54, that's a Gucci. <laughs> We're gonna beat them today. <laughs> it's really cool just to see also, I mean, all the atmosphere is behind and the attractions you have. I mean, you have the cars, you have the, for example, here you have the whole Corvette fan club and everything. So yeah, just dope to be part of it. And yeah, well. And I think as a Euronesca fan, even if you're not from the UK, that's a must. You have to come to well, visit uh, Brent's Hatch. And look, here we have uh, another competitor, Mr. Vittorio. Hey, mate. What's up, Vittorio? Well, good today. What did you do? <laughs> How are you, mate? Good? What's up, mate? That's your favorite fan of Yeah, me. that's the favorite fan How of are you? Oh, but so We would see him back in a minute. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, so Vittorio, well, he yesterday, he passed me unfortunately, so yeah, he finished second, so as you know, yeah, huh? a good battle. Yeah, very good battle. That's but we sure. go for the win today. Was that's it not sure. too easy to overtake? <laughs> that was like a super double draw it, open. It was for like, you. oh, thank you. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah. thank you and goodbye. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We'll be good today. Come on, let's do it. Let's go for it. That's for sure. Exactly. We start Have again. Have fun, guys. So, you heard Vittorio, so he starts seconds today, and me just behind third. And so, yeah, we try to do our best in my race, and then Gil, he started in P5, four of no, P5. It's five. But it's inside, it could be good. And hopefully, we will have a lot of rain in my race. I can't wait, I can't wait to race in the rain. So, yeah. yeah. So, that's it for now. We see each other after the race. <laughs> because we are in for a barnstormer. It's Ercoli uh, and Garelli on the front row. They roll down towards the lights that will go out any second. Now, and we are racing. It's Gianmarco Ercoli and Vittorio Garelli side by side as they approach the first corner. Liam Hazeman's in third place. They're trying to get to the inside of Vittorio Garelli, but no. Anthony Kumpen in fourth position. Four corners to take his maiden Euro NASCAR two win here last year. And Hazeman's there trying to set himself up for a good run up towards Druids. So already looking a little bit feisty here. But uh, in doing that, he's also invited Anthony Kumpen a little bit closer to his. Graham Hill bend, but Liam Hazeman's was there in second place, I believe. Let's please take a look at that. They'll head towards Surtees bend now. And yes, Liam Hazeman's has gotten through into second place. Nice stuff from the Dutchman, Liam Hazeman's in the corner and Gianmarco Ercoli has company and it's Liam Hazeman's and uh, well they seem to be getting along better Anthony Kumpen may well face pressure this time from Giorgio Maggi but what's happened to Hazeman's Hazeman's with a problem it looked to me like potentially that tyre was deflating on the number 50 car, Liam Hazeman has had an issue there. And Hazeman has not crossed the line and he just now limps into pit lane. You see that? Oh, well, it went actually pretty well in the whole race. I starting third, passing the second one, was second, then fighting for the lead because we were actually much quicker. We had the fastest lap of the race. Unfortunately, after lap, I don't know, I think it was after the seven or eight lap, like the steering uh, broke down, so I couldn't turn anymore. So yeah, had to retire the car. So on to next race, unfortunately, that's racing, it happens. It isn't dry either for the first time this season. The cars of Euronasca are on cut tires. It is wet out there on circuit. I think it's greasy rather than wet. A lot of drivers will tell you 
that's sub-optimal at best. Oh, and a bit of contact, I think, there potentially between Nastka and Linster there, side by side through Graham Hill bent. Linster on the painted kerbs on the outside of Graham Hill. That's not good for traction. Although Martin Dubeck, I'm sure, is going to try and retaliate. Gil Linster, though, in sixth position, always also looking lively. Use his streak of victories. It's four from four for Vladimir Osiotsis in the 2023 Euronascar 2 season. Paul Gifro is second place. He holds off Alberto Nasca. Melvin de Groot takes fourth place ahead of Gil Linster and Martin Dubeck, who has to settle for sixth place eventually. Jack Davidson will win the rookie class on his home circuit. He takes seventh. First rain, uh, rain race is over. P5, it's okay. Uh, nah. Not actually what I expected. I knew that I had to start on P5. Um, yeah, just knew, tried to survive uh, the first laps and then mid-race, found a good space, had for a long time, uh, the fastest lap time. But um, yeah, the front guys are already a little bit off, so difficult to catch them. We had no safety cars, so it's difficult if you have like a gap, a few seconds to, to just fight back. But we had a nice, uh, nice fight overall for 25 laps with Martin and uh, the road. And, yeah, very unlucky for um, Martin. He got blocked by a lap car end of the, of the race now, so I was able to catch him uh, on the straight in the last lap. So a little lucky for me. And that's racing and uh, yeah, take some points for the championship and hopefully a little stronger and with better positions in the next race.